Good morning. Is it a good day? I hope it is. Do you have reason to rejoice today? You, you know, we really do, but it's a matter of what we focus on. Love what it says in the prophet Zephaniah uh, in verse 15, chapter 3. It says, the King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. It says in verse 11, on that day you will no longer need to be ashamed. How many of us are ashamed at times? Let's, let's go back to the Garden of Eden. Everything was really cool between Adam and Eve and God, and then they take a wrong turn. The one thing that they're not supposed to do is what they do. And so they were aware of their own psychological nakedness, okay, because they started putting fig leaves on. All of a sudden, they weren't feeling good about themselves. And that's the first sign. But then they became aware that there was this barrier that was now between them and God. And it existed because they disobeyed God. The one thing he said not to do is what they did. And they became aware of good and evil. Before before that, they're just aware of the Lord. They're aware of each other. Can you imagine living in a world like that? God's going to restore us to something like that. How many of you would like to never deal with temptation again? I, for one, would sign up for that. And that's what God has in store for us. But see, when they sinned and then they heard the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they'd probably done this many times before, just unhindered relationship with God. But this time, they hide. They physically hide. And so the first words that God says are, Adam, where are you? I mean, he's still asking that question. He's asking Paul, where are you? He's asking each and every one of you, fill in the blank with your name. He is asking you, where are you? Because he created you for relationship. I mentioned on Sunday morning that I saw this, this ad. I was watching college football late Saturday night. And it says, your soul needs do. It's a Mountain Dew commercial. And I get it. It's kind of funny. But... Your soul doesn't need do. You were created with a soul that thirsts for God. And we try to replace with a lot of other things. And even those of us who've come to Christ, there's still times we go after things and we realize, ah, why did I do that? Why did I do that? But the barrier is down on God's side. It really is. It says, on that day, you no longer need to be ashamed. You don't need to be ashamed. God accepts you the way you are. You might say, preacher, you don't know what I've done. I, I don't need to know what you've done. I know what Christ has done. I know what Christ did on the cross for each and every human being. It's just simply a matter of us grabbing a hold of it. And do you know when we really need it? We need it when we mess up. I recently read a book by Max Lucado. It was about the life of Jacob. And I thought about it. There's not a lot of books written about J Jacob. Do you know why? He didn't do very much good stuff. He really didn't. I mean, it's a crazy story. He, I would say he slightly improves from being the weasel that he was at the beginning of the story. I mean, he steals his brother's birthright. Um, he, he lies to his father. Uh, he, he lives on the lamb. He, he, just so many wrong turns that he makes. And I don't have time for all of them. And God chose Jacob because he was good. No, God chose Jacob because he loved Jacob. Do you realize that today? God didn't choose you because he knew how good you were. He called you and he chose you because he loves you. Jesus went to the cross for you because he loves you. So think about that. Spiritually, we are all descendants of, of Abraham, of Jacob, and, and then ultimately that led to, to Jesus, okay? And spiritually, that's our lineage. But man, it's a really interesting thing to take a look at the lineage of Jesus because there's some people in there that we wouldn't have picked. We would have thought, man, I wouldn't have put them in there. You know what that says to you and me? That you don't have to be perfect, but you need to believe what the Lord has done. And ultimately, Jacob eventually did. And that's what God wants for you to do today. And if you do that, you can rejoice in this day and know the promise of Matthew 28, 20. Jesus said it, I will be with you always to the very end of the age. Get in touch with the presence of Jesus in your world today and share it with somebody else. The barrier is gone. God bless you. Have a great day.